you guys, Multiclass Gamer here. Welcome back to more Banjo Tooie. In the last episode, we ended things off right before entering the first world of the game, which we're gonna do in this episode. But we, for some reason, we start off here at Ginger Village. Well, actually, every time you load up your game, it's gonna automatically start you at Ginger Village. So you have to warp to the area of Isle Hacks that you want to go to if you want to enter the world of your desire. So, there we go, there's the first use of these silos. And with that, we are already here at the Wooded Hollow, which is the location of a um, Jiggy Wiggy's temple, which is going to be the area we're going to have to return to after every single we finish every single world in order to open more worlds. Well, actually you can ult open up multiple worlds, and we'll be able to do that uh, next time we go there. But for now, let's enter the first world of the game. This is... Let's enter the world and find out. I'm... Um, what I'm going to try to do is avoid spoiling names of the worlds before we enter them. This is Mayhem Temple. Yep. This is our first world. And already things are looking kind of interesting here. As you can see, we have our first set of notes. You found some notes, boy. Now come and find me. Alright. So if you recall correctly from the first game, notes, there were a hundred of them in every single world. And if you were to die, you would have to restart collecting all of them. Well, not in this game. Yeah, you get to keep all the notes you get even after you die. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about going around collecting them all over again this time. And not only that, but they're also a lot easier to get in this game because uh, they come in sets of five. Hey, get your sorry hide over here and press B. Oh, fine, whatever. Who the heck is this guy? Well, maybe we'll finally find out. Let's see. What the heck? Drill Sergeant Jam Jar is important for, for duty, sir. Banjo, get a load of this bozo. He looks like bottles in uniform. Of course I look like bottles, you punk. He's my brother. How's the geek keeping, anyhow? Not too good. Recently deceased at the hands of Grunty the Witch. Sorry to hear that, Cleeball. Did he go out fight? Playing cards, actually. Typical. So, you'll be wanting to, to learn some of my special moves to get even with the witch, huh? Not really. Bottles taught us a lot loads in the last game. Pah! He only knew Novus moves. You'll get nowhere without my advanced techniques. Sounds good to, to us, Jam Jars. Why not teach us a few now? Not that easy, punk. You've got to prove your sorry selves first by collecting me a few notes. Come back if you can find enough. Hey, wait a minute. I see you've got enough notes for my first lesson. Listen and learn, you punks. What you need is an aiming sight. Hit the target, then you'll might. First press a few by pressing up C. Hit Z to fire with accuracy. That'll be all. Dismissed. Alright, so there we go. There's our first move of the game. Let's try it out. This is basically a game. Basically, go in first person. Now you can aim and fire eggs. It's basically like this. It's kind of like the, uh, just like in Donkey Kong 64 when you have your gun out and you, or your shooter out and you go in first person. It's basically like that. So now, as you can see, this game is going to have a lot more advanced moves than Banjo Kazooie did. So that's, a, that's one of the things that makes it way more awesome. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to use our egg aim mode here. And we're going to shoot, or we're going to feed these uh, statue crocodiles here, statue crocs. We will do that in, uh, well, if I can get my accuracy right here, jeez. Okay. So anyways, uh, before I did this recording, it's actually, I'm actually recording this on Father's Day, like more than a week before you guys are going to see it, but... Uh, you know, what the heck, what'd you guys do on Father's Day? Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to hang out with my father, so the best thing I could do, could do was give a phone call, unfortunately. Because of how far away I live from my parents and whatnot, but that's okay. I'll be able to see him next weekend, fortunately. Same time as my friends turning 21, which is all the more awesome, because that means that, that means all my friends are 21. Well, the ones I, I'm very close to with, that, that is, it's terrible. Can't find Target Zan's favorite priceless relic thingy. I think it may have been stolen. Tough luck. We don't care. Help Chief Bloat a uh, Bloatazin find it, and you'll or we'll reward you, Jiggy. A Jiggy? Well, in that case, <laughs> tell me more. Great. I'll open the other door for you, but please hurry. All right, fine. Who the heck is Target Zan, anyways? 
Well, sounds very important considering he has a priceless relic thingy. Nothing comes more priceless than that, yeah. Alright, so, I, I, um, don't worry about not having the, uh, uh, Talon Trot, because we already have that. Unfortunately, it's not going to get us on top of this, uh, this pile of gold here. Uh, but it might get us on top of this one. Yep, it does. And with that, we get our first honey piece. Extra honey piece. This is an extra honeycomb piece. Uh, yeah, he's gonna tell us what everything is as soon as we pick pick up the first time, so get used to that. Yeah, that's that. Alright, so we're going to... Oh, crap, sorry, I don't have that move yet. I don't have the move yet, man! Uh, I'm gonna run into that same issue I ran into in Donkey Kong 64, where it's like... You might as well just unlock every move in the entire level before you actually do anything. You know, you're gonna run to that same exact issue. In fact, you're gonna find a lot of similarities between this game and Donkey Kong 64. It's like it, it's basically to, the best way to describe this game is Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo Kazooie had a baby. This warp pad, find another one in this world, and you'll be able to warp between them. Oh crap! I didn't activate the first one, did I? Shoot! You're kidding me, right? Oh man! Because there's, there's one at the beginning of every single world, and there's a total of five of them in every world. This is supposed to be like the second one that you find. Crap! Oh well. It's not like it's not. It's not like that's the only time ever gonna stop by. That's for sure. Okay. Anyways, in here, uh, we didn't get a good look at the house, but it'll look very familiar, and you'll realize automatically who it is. Yep, Mumble Skull. Here we are. And right here is something that uh, you're gonna find every single world. It's very important for you. <laughs> You've caught a Globo. They're supposed to have magical powers, supposedly. Yes, here's it. Let's see if Mumbo has any use for it. Hey, Mumbo, what's up? Love your new digs, man. I mean, like, got your own throne and everything. Jeez, I'm so jealousy. Well, actually, I kind of have it. Eh. Ah, Bear and Bird here at last. Mumbo, best shaman in game. So built new skull. Mumbo also wants to help, but must find me magic creature. Hey, what coincidence? We got a globo. Must give magic creature to Mumbo if one help. Mumbo must help? Sure, Mumbo, why not? Sure, we need all the help we can get. Throw it in Mumbo's bag. Okay. A magical druggy bag. <laughs> Alright. Ah, Mumbo, get to be hero at last. Press B to see Mighty Shaman Zapstick. Turn me to my chair when one to be bear and bird again. Alright, so now we're in control Mumbo. Alright. Now... I don't know why, but I really love the music in Mumbo Skull in this game. I just want to point that out, because, uh... I used to listen to it a lot. It's just like, a, It's one of those video game songs that really makes you just relax, I guess. I don't know. It's the perfect song to listen to after a long night at work. Okay, but I digress. Okay, so these are, uh, your generic enemies. You're gonna see, basically, the same exact enemies in every single world, only they're gonna look slightly different. Okay, this, this thing right here is kind of important. You've collected a skill stop honeycomb. Press B to stop your energy bar as close to the top as possible. Alright. So basically, um, it's pretty much pretty self-explanatory. You have 10 seconds to pick a, you know, pick where it stops. And uh, it's some of them are random and some of them just go from you know one to full, one to full, one to full, and so on. Um, we got another move here to get from jam jars, but we have to be banjo kazooie in order to get it, so we're not gonna uh, dwell on that right now. Instead, we're going to uh, as Mumbo. Um, you can pick up you can pick up stuff as Mumbo just like you can with banjo kazooie, um, but Mumbo has something to do in, of his own in every single world, the entire game, and it has it's basically uh, what he does depends on the world he's in. And it's always the exact same power in, uh, you know, throughout the entire world that he's in. But he, but it's different, but it's different, uh, you know, mag different kind of magic in every world that he's in. This, in this one, it's Summit. I think it's Summit. Hope this works. Yes, yeah, Summit, Golden Goliath. Now, he only has one mum one mumbo pad in this world, but most worlds are going to have more than one, actually. But for this particular case, it's only one mumbo pad, so only one thing you have to do, and it's, uh, it's uh, take control of this, this uh, Goliath statue here. Mm. 
Mumbo Magic make Golden Goliath rise. Magic only lasts short time. To control me again, return statue to its base and press B. Alright. So you're not going to have enough time to do all this in one try, but you have unlimited tries, so don't worry about it. But you get 75 seconds to do stuff. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and destroy these uh, statues. Just simply press B and kick stuff. There you go. That's basically what you're going to be doing here. But you want to, you want to kick that... Uh, Kick piece of that door open, or uh, you know, kick a hole into that door. Is a better way to describe it, I guess. And that's the only thing you have to do there. Um, but there's more stuff for you to do over here at the beginning of the world. We gotta try it. I wanna see if I can activate the. Seriously, how can I miss it? It's like right there. It was right in front of my face, right there. There we go. We found another warp pad. Move on to and press B to warp to any other warp pad that you have activated in this world. Yes. But more on that later. So I can't believe I actually avoided the first warp zone. What was I thinking? The first warp pad, I mean, not the first warp zone, jeez. I know I tend to do that when I'm playing Super Mario Bros, but this is not Super Mario Bros, man. It's a Banjo 2, a way different game here. Um, I think you can get this, uh... Can you get this by... Okay, I guess you can't get that Jinjo by doing that. Um, but you, first thing you want to do is you want to go left here, and go across the swamp here, and this is the only way you can get this Jiggy right here. There you go. And then there's one more thing you can do as the as the Goliath statue, but I don't think we'll have enough time to get to it. It's that it looks like there's an opening there, but there's actually a, a wall covering it, and crap, we're not gonna make it. We're just barely not gonna make it. Mumbo magic run out. Aw, oh, dang it. Alright, well I'm just gonna cut back over there, cause that's pretty much the only thing we have left to do with the with the Goliath statue, so I'll meet you guys over there. We're just gonna summon it one more time. Now, I guess I should also mention right here that you can once you give a globo to Mumbo, you can use his his magic indefinitely in that in that particular world. So, so there's a and there's a globo you have to give to Mumbo in every single world. So that's at least uh, and there's a total of eight worlds. So that's a total of at least eight globos we're going to be getting. So just to put things into perspective here, okay, meet you guys back outside. Door I need to bust open. All right, here we go. Bust this door open. There we go. Hey, you know my, what the heck? Might as well destroy statues here. Now, inside this uh, temple right here is actually something kind of important. Something you'll be come back to uh, multiple times throughout the entire game. And remember that? Uh, remember that sandcastle in Treasure Trove Cove back in Banjo Kazooie? Well, that is actually the equivalent to it. That temple right there. So more on that later. Uh, but for now, there's uh, yeah, we're just gonna wait for our time to run out here. I mean, like you can, oh, we we can activate this warp warp uh, warp pad right here. And we can go and kill an enemy just to activate. There we go. All right, goodbye, statue. You did your job. Which means Mumbo has done his job in this world. That's literally all he does here. There will be a few other worlds where he does only one thing, but for the most part, Mumbo is a lot more useful than he is in this world. Very much more useful. So we're gonna get Mumbo back to this chair, and I'll do that ju and just for this, just one time. I'll go ahead and show it on video. But you know, it's very self-explanatory. He just literally just jump back onto his bed, his bed, his throne. Well, might as well be his bed. I don't know how what world else he's gonna sleep in this, this skull of his. But yeah, I love the peaceful music inside of his skull. Love it very much. All right, Mumbo, let's get you back onto your throne so Banjo Kazooie can. Rain as the hero once again. The true heroes of this journey. Alright. So up to 14 minutes here, so I'm gonna have to stop here. Well, well uh, there's still there was that minor cut with the Goliath statue, so we'll continue on here. Okay. Um, but I would like to go ahead and get that move, I'm still thinking while it's still in my mind for now. Um, and there is actually Jiggy we can get with our uh, egg aim, but we'll take care of this first. Here we go. No, come on. There we go. Here's a move that's a load of fun. Now use Kazooie as a handheld gun. Zed fires eggs both high and low. Targets and temple, in you can go. Alright. So basically this move actually activates a first person mode, a first person shooter mode, literally, that only is available in certain parts of the game, in each of the worlds. And uh, one of them is actually right inside his temple here. 
Now, something right here is something very important. This is actually a treble cleft. It's worth 20 notes, basically. And there we go. Nice one, punk. Treble clefts are worth the uh, mighty 20 notes. And right there's a Jinjo as well. And that actually completes an entire Jinjo family right there. Yep. That's the white Jinjo family that we just completed. The single Jinjo. Huh. Kind of reminds me of my, me. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I do live by myself, but... I wouldn't have a house that big to myself, that's for sure. But yeah, there we go. Phew, I am grateful for your help. I thought I'd never find my way home. Take this j jiggy for your troubles. Hey, I feel bad for that guy, he lives all alone. Hopefully he hangs out a lot with the, with the, I don't know, the Jinjo, Jinjo King, uh, King Jingling, I mean, yeah, King Jingling, there we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Look at the state of my poor Bovinus field. This plague of filthy flies is scoffing my crops. Oh dear, how can we help? Get rid of the pesky flies, of course. Say your prayers, flies. Yeah, they can do that next time on Banjo-Tooie. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I will see you guys next time where we'll get some more progress in on Mayhem Temple. And we'll go from there. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Goodbye.